Hey everybody, welcome to Celebration Bar Review. My name is Jackson Lummy, and I'm glad to have you with us today. We're counting down to your bar exam and we're roughly about 92 days right before your test. That's the time you should be looking at this particular message. Now today, you might notice as usual that behind me on, now let's see, this shoulder, there is a picture there. And if you blow up your screen a little bit bigger, you can see that it's actually a pretty special player in that picture. It's a football player by the name of John Elway number seven for the Denver Broncos. And if you're not a big football fan, well, some of this may not uh, make so much sense to you, but if you know anything about football, you probably know about Elway and you know about the Broncos who were at that time, Super Bowl champions. And it's relevant to what I wanted to talk about today. The, for many years, as I was growing up as a kid in Denver, the Denver Broncos were a literally God awful football team. <laughs> they were vertically striped socks, no ability to win, terrible, awful. And I grew up during most of that, and many was the Sunday night I cried myself to sleep listening to the Broncos lose another big game. But later in their history, as I got a little bit older, I had the opportunity to be in Denver when a quarterback came along by the name of John Elway. And uh, certainly if you're a football fan, you know who this guy is. He's been inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's clearly one of the most proficient and productive quarterbacks to ever play the game. And today he's the general manager of the Denver Broncos and successfully guided them to a Super Bowl win a couple of years. To make a long story short, Elway really is my sports hero. And my office is adorned with paintings and photographs of him. If I bend my head a little bit, there's more paintings and stuff of Elway. And the ones you can't see are all in the rest of the room. Um, now, I also have to tell you that I currently am a New Orleans Saints fan and have been for the last 10 years. It's the kick me when I'm down syndrome. But in any event, John Elway remains one of my favorite sports heroes, if you're allowed to have a sports hero at my age. And the reason that Elway was a hero to me, and this is what's relevant about the bar exam, is it wasn't necessarily because of his abilities, although they were pretty amazing, or his strengths. What appealed to me about Elway was that this was a guy who went to the Super Bowl three times and got the snot kicked out of him. This is the part of the story people forget, but the Broncos got to the Super Bowl and then they just lost. And they didn't lose by a little, they lost by a lot. It was really terrible and horrible. And frankly, it was a miracle when they got to the Super Bowl back in those days. So I suppose to most people, it was no big surprise when they got destroyed in those first three games. But along the way, Elway got tagged uh, with the label of being a loser. He was a guy that couldn't win the big game. And that's difficult, if not impossible for most people to deal with. But Elway has this amazing capacity to rebound from that and to not view himself as a loser. I don't think he's ever really seen himself in that context. He didn't say to himself, I'm never going to win anything or be anything because I keep losing this big football game. In fact, <clears throat> he kept playing and he kept coming back. And if you know the story, he actually finished his playing career with two straight Super Bowl wins. And now as a general manager, he's been incredibly uh, successful as well with the Broncos. What I'm saying is that Elway didn't let an imaginary bag of rocks that had been tied on him by the sports writers and the, the broadcasters and the fans, uh, among others, he didn't let those things stick to him. And you might say, all right, so what does this have to do with taking the bar? It seems to me that one of the things that happens, particularly as I start to talk to students when results are coming in, and that's at this 90 day point, we start to get results from the previous bar exam. And in this current environment, more people are failing than passing. And so it's a really hard time for a lot of people. And there are a lot of people that come to me that have, I think, that same metaphorical bag of rocks tied around them. They tie it to themselves and they begin to think of themselves as losers because they lost the big game, the bar review. I had a conversation the other day with a man who was thinking about the taking the bar exam, who was uh, very accomplished, apparently, was a tax attorney had gone to a high level law school, but many years ago had taken and failed the New York bar exam. And it was still bothering him all these years later. And he said, I don't want to think of myself as a loser. Okay. I think that a lot of us are successful. Obviously that's how we got to the point to be able to take the bar exam. And, uh, uh most people in law school have never failed an exam in their life. Certainly not a high stakes exam. And then you get into the bar exam and think you can fail those exams. You might have prepared inappropriately. Maybe you didn't work hard enough, although that's rarely the problem, but perhaps you just didn't get ready for the test in a way that was going to be productive to you and be successful. And if you failed the exam, the real danger is that you then 
as the results come out, begin to tag yourself as being a loser. So what I've told my students this week in my email to them is that if you're going to be successful in the bar, you've got to believe in yourself. You need the heart of a champion. And I would define Elway as being someone who is emblematic of that. He's a champion on a lot of levels, not just because he had amazing physical abilities, but he really had the heart of a champion. He refused to give up. He refused to be defined by what had happened to him in the past. I think it would have been pretty easy to just give up and say, look, I made it into three Super Bowls, so get off my back. He didn't do that. He kept pushing. He made his present and he made his future. Now, I think there's nothing I could say that would be as useful or as important as that. As you prepare for an exam in 90 plus days, you need to have an expectation of success as you go through this process. If you expect to fail the exam, if you expect to lose, I can tell you that very little you do in the way of studying right now will change any of that. It's really distressing to me to talk to students who say things to me like, I can't pass this exam. I just know I can't pass it. I'm no good at taking tests. I freeze up. I can't write essays. I can't take multiple choice tests. What in the world are you doing to yourself? You have to change that belief if that's what you've been thinking. And the first thing that you've got to change is your belief in yourself. Now we've got tools in our course like paraliminals and affirmations, and obviously ways to help you get better and stronger at what you're doing. But the point is, if you don't believe in yourself, it isn't going to happen. Too often, I think we let other people define us. We let externals define us. We let results from a standardized test define us, or we let what a professor says about us in school define us. Instead of recognizing that in order to get to the bar exam, you had to be extraordinarily talented and blessed and gifted with lots of ability. You had to get through high school and then college. You had to get into law school. You had to get out of law school. Maybe you had to be in practice for a number of years. You have been in a position of success in order to be able to take this test in the first place. Now, I don't buy into the language of the National Conference of Bar Examiners who say bar takers have less ability. I don't think that's really fair or true at all. I think bar examiners have just as much ability as they ever have had, but I think the test is tougher. And I think the preparation opportunities have a wider range of efficacy. We've been pretty successful. There are a lot of big box bar reviews that are not so successful. And if that's what you've been doing, don't blame yourself, blame the approach that you take. And I think that might make more sense. So as you consider what to do and where to go over the next 92 days of study, I want you to concentrate on having the heart of a champion, having that belief that you're going to overcome and succeed no matter what obstacles. I do interviews with passing bar students after each exam, and I am constantly amazed by the hurdles that each individual has overcome in their own life in order to pass their tests. And if you want some inspiration, check those out. They're just amazing. And they're great stories of the different things that people have done in order to be successful. In football, Elway had a lot of obstacles. He had a really bad football team for most of his career surrounding him. But then he got a couple of key players, a coach that wasn't a complete idiot. And they actually had a chance to win. And he took advantage of that opportunity when it came along. I think that's what you've got to expect. You've got to give yourself a chance to win, a chance to be successful. Then take advantage of that opportunity, take advantage of good coaching, and you won't get knocked down by what happened in the past. If you've never taken a bar exam before, great. Don't think about failing the exam, think about succeeding. Think about how great that's gonna be and how you're gonna do after you've passed the test. And if you're a retaker, keep the heart of a champion. Keep that as your functioning, operating thought. What you're gonna be thinking about, keep it as the way that you prepare and function. You'll find in the next 92 days, that things will go a lot more smoothly, a lot more effectively. And the ultimate result for you is more likely to be passing because it's your expectation rather than something to be dreaded. Elway had this enormous capacity to excite fans. He was great to watch in person and to draw people to him. He did that, at least for me in large part, because he just never gave up. If you're a Denver Bronco fan, you remember the drive, 98 yards with less than two minutes to win the AFC championship. If you're a Cleveland fan, you don't have quite such fond memories of that. But the point is that Elway refused to give up. And I would tell you as we head into this 90-day mark, whether you just gotten your results and found out you didn't pass, or you're a first-time taker, or maybe just coming back to the bar exam after many years, never give up. Just keep working, just keep pushing, and you'll get there. I look forward to hearing from you as we go along and uh, look forward to your, your comments and thoughts. And if you want to know more about us and what we do, I invite you to join us. Have a great uh, week of study. 
and we'll be back to you again later. Bye-bye.